This is Talkback, 721-1290 or 1-800-568-5309. This is News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 98.3 FM, KGVO. Missoula's News and Weather Station. Hey, welcome everybody. It is Thursday, October 31st. Happy Halloween, everybody. Indeed. <laughs> okay. Uh, Talk Back this morning is brought to you by Phillips Janitorial, offering both residential and commercial cleaning. No job too big or small for Phillips, 406 6617 Also brought to you by Y West Storage, out of the Y on Two Smokes Way. If you need storage, here's their number, 406-510-0590. Y West, we're making room for you at 123 Seamless Gutters. Uh, they handle everything that has to do with gutters so that you don't have to. As winter approaches, give them a call, 240-2669, protecting the foundation of your future. And by Harrington Surgical Supply, where if you can feel confident in their discreet and knowledgeable guidance on a multitude of products and medical supplies. The views and opinions expressed on TalkBack are not those of the staff, management, or advertisers. Well, good morning, everyone. Good to have you along this morning. That is Mr. Nick Christensen right over there. Good morning. Happy Halloween. Stop pointing at me. Oh. <laughs> All right. And we do have uh, a caller already on the line. It is open oh, phones oh, oh. for this first half hour. And so if you uh, have something on your mind, give us a call. 721-1290-1800-568-5309. Because at 830 this morning, Dr. John Lopp will be joining us here in the studio. A man who has made some actually world headlines with some research he has done. But right now, we have Brad joining us on the phone. Good morning, Brad. How are you, sir? Uh, uh, I'm I'm doing well, sir. Uh, am I coming through clearly? Because yes. you're a little uh, uh, garbly. You sound, you sound oh, just great. Brain. You sound just great. Well, thank you. And I feel great, too. Uh, what I'm calling about is I've sent out uh, several press releases about this, trying to uh, uh, fine-tune it and become as accurate as possible. But in the Public Service Commission race for District 4, which is all the counties that touch uh, Idaho, uh, the uh, 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 independent uh, uh, opponent of Jennifer Fielder, who is the vice chairman of the commission, has received the attention of massive amounts of dark money. They raised uh, in the dark money cabal, which would be the uh, Montana Ratepayers Association by name, which is about two months old and will probably die in about... Uh, uh, the first Wednesday in, in, in November, they raised $495,000, uh, uh, in basically their initial offering on this. And since then, uh, tens of thousands of more of, uh, independent, uh, donations, uh, to the cause. Recently, another $40,000 to the cause. Uh, the money is all dark money. There's no principles. Uh, there's no uh, reporting required other than the expenditures as to who's doing what and where. And the chilling effect that has on basic democracy uh, is absolutely horrendous. It is uh, plainly a third effort to control the Public Service Commission by uh, large numbers of environmental NGOs. Uh, so they can control the energy future of Montana. And people need to realize that when you're reading their uh, uh, political flyers and their mailers and their online messages, that this is dark money that is not geared to help you. It is not geared in any way to educate you. It is there to herd you into voting for an independent candidate who is receiving money from the Democratic Central Committees and uh, Central uh committee political directors uh it is quite possibly the oddest thing i've ever seen but obviously a four hundred ninety-five thousand dollars money ball if you don't vote their way it means you can't be reelected, and it means if you actually file uh against their chosen candidate you'll have a half a million dollars laid against you the chilling effect that this ha- has and will have across the state of montana is horrendous and that's what i'm calling in sir now you are you are running for the public service commission, are you not? I am, and I've been warning people that this would happen to me, and uh, uh, it and it did not. My opponent has been a uh, uh, true lady, 
Her campaign has been garden variety. Her donations have, have been uh, legitimate. There's been no involvement. Uh, so I was wrong on location. It wasn't me they uh, decided to dump this on. It was Jennifer Fielder. Jennifer Fielder is a uh, uh, really good commissioner. I don't know that I would call her a great campaigner. And uh, uh, people need to understand it. And that's why I'm saying what I'm saying and doing what I'm doing, realizing they have $300,000 in reserve. They can dump 100000 on me between now and election day and change my uh, change the trajectory of uh, my campaign. But defending truth, truth and democracy has to be the, the, the first cause. And that's why I'm going public with this. All right. Well, Brad, thank you for the call. We appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, uh, so we're up against a break. 721-1290 is our number, 1-800-568-5309. It is open phones from now until 830. And, again, at 830 this morning, Dr. John Lott will be joining us here in the studio this morning. And he'll be with us all the way until about nine, uh, nine, uh, nine, about 945. And then, for the last few minutes, uh, Ryan Zinke will be joining us uh, to uh, to talk about his candidacy for uh, for the U.S. Congress. So lots going on, and uh, we hope uh, that you'll give us a call at 721-1290 or 1-800-568-5309. It is open phones from now until 830, so give us a call. Dennis Bragg with weather update. Rain and snow likely today, mainly rain through the afternoon as we top out in the mid-40s. Little to no snow accumulation expected in the valleys, but an inch or so possible in the passes. There's just not a lot of moisture with this system. Trick-or-treaters will run into rain and cold down into the upper 30s by spook time. Eventually, we'll drop to the mid-20s by Friday morning. Then through the weekend, clouds with periods of rain occasionally mixed with snow, mainly at the higher elevations. Lows just below freezing, highs in the mid-40s through Sunday. Data shows that after a child turns nine in foster care, they are much less likely to be adopted. But the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption believes every child is adoptable. Families, if you're able to let your hair down a little bit, there's a lot to learn from teenagers. The clock is ticking for teens at risk of aging out of foster care. Learn how you can help at DaveThomasFoundation.org. Okay, welcome back to Talk Back. Uh, for the next 17 minutes or so, we have open phones, and Emmett is taking advantage of that. Emmett, good morning. You're up early, sir. What's on your mind? Oh, thanks for taking my call while I'm feeling better. I'm grateful to that. Um, I'm thankful to God for that. But I'm. Uh, do you? Uh, did you hear yesterday about um, uh, um, Joe Biden's horrible comments calling all Trump supporters garbage i mean did you hear that i'm sure you did it's been all over the well, news yeah and, and and then he then he came back and corrected it he didn't say all the supporters were garbage just that donald trump was garbage so yeah I, well actually that <laughs> comedian and basically okay. i'm not yeah. buying that and then of course kamala tried to say a half-hearted response you know he didn't mean, I, I mean, I don't agree. I'll, I'll support everyone, no matter who they vote for. It was so tepid. No, I'm not believing this. They really have revealed who they are and what they believe about us. They believe if we go to church and pray and love Donald Trump and our Republicans that we're basically bottom feeders, garbage. Can you, I, I, I cannot believe the audacity, the, the, the horror of these people. This could actually lead to... FEMA camps if they get elected or something like this. And of course, guess who was sipping a cognac on some sort of cognac on some sort of um, television program about um, African American issues? It was Kamala Harris, and she claims to be for the little guy. Cognac is very expensive. I had it years ago, but it's a luxury, a luxury drink for the rich. Now they've exposed who they are. It, it makes me furious, and I should make everyone well, livid that well, they let, would call us garbage. Let, 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 let me ask: what, what, what should they be drinking? I mean, you know, I mean, does it does it matter what are... water and or some coffee and something okay. for the middle and lower class, okay. rather than cognac okay. on television? It's optics, it's optics. Okay, I just still encourage people to um. Um, vote early, continue to pray and pray. And um, I personally think um, Joe Biden should be impeached for this. These people don't 
to belong anywhere near well, the White House he, he, if they hate us like this. He, he only has a, a few months left, and he's not really the president right now anyway, because, you know, uh, Kamala Harris is, you know, basically in charge. But anyway, thanks for the call, Emmett. Appreciate it. Always yeah, good to hear they, from they, you. They all think this that way. So let's pray for a nation. They all, all right. think this way of us. Yeah. You all right. It. Thanks for the call. Let's get Dave on the line. Dave, good morning, sir. You are on Talkback. What's up? Yes, I like, first of all, I'd like to talk about the history of dark money. Okay. In the past, okay, in the past, years ago, uh, Republicans generally got most of the dark money. And the Democrats were angry about it, so they, they tried to, they passed a law trying to shine light on dark money, making, making people, uh, send money in would be, would be open to public scrutiny. Uh, but the Republicans fought that, and they they fought the law. They took it all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled that dark money was free speech, and so the Republicans won. Now they, I hear Republicans complain nonstop about dark money, and they have only themselves to blame for that. But now, for for, but, for folks who don't, just I'm going to interject here just real quick. For those who don't sure. understand what dark money is, okay. Uh, according to Open Secrets, dark money refers to political spending meant to influence the decision of a voter where the donor is not disclosed and the source of the money is unknown. So that's why they call it dark money. So go ahead. I'm sorry, please. Yeah, that's exactly true. And and they they should be honest about that and, you know, say they made a mistake. They should, you know, dark money should be, you know, you should when you send money in. I mean, what's wrong with the world knowing who sent the money in? And, uh, and why? I mean, that's a reasonable thing to do. But uh, there was another subject, the NRA. You know, I used to belong to the NRA. And it was at one time a good organization. But now it's become just a money maker. It's just out for money. And, and to get an F, to get an F from the NRA, all you have to do is say that you oppose uh, people who, who have uh, records, you know, um, Convicted felons, that you don't want them to have guns. And if if you say that, you're going to get an F from the NRA. So if people people need to question uh, the NRA and why their why their positions are giving people Fs, because um, you know so many people just see uh, F from the NRA and and they're zombies and they vote because of the NRA. All right. Thanks for the call. Appreciate it, Dave. And Jeff is up next. Jeff, good morning, sir. You're on Open Phones on Talkback. What's on your mind, please? Hey, good morning. Well, as usual, David got it ass backwards. Um, it's not that the fact of dark money is out there. I would love to see everything disclosed. It's the hypocrisy of the left saying, oh, look at those evil Republicans taking dark money when they're taking it as well and then not admitting it. I mean, here's the case in point, and this is what I was calling in for anyway. Um, you see a lot of signs right now supporting uh, Lynch and Bidigary for uh, court, Supreme Court justice. And the source of that money, at least in one case, a lot of cases for buttons, and the signs that I've seen is something called the Justice Project. Well, what is a justice project? Well, it's something out of uh, Washington, D.C. They've got an address listed, but it doesn't say anything about who their donors are when you go out to their website. Nothing about donors, where the money's coming from, how they're getting it, what they're spending it on. It's all a secret. So here's the problem is that this is particularly for the Supreme Court, but it's also the case with CI 126, 127, 128. All of these things are funded by outside groups who are supporting things in Montana for some national agenda, but not telling us who they are. And so that's my objection is that I'm not against the Justice Project giving money to Lynch and Bidigary. I just want to know where that money's coming from. And I've always wanted that. I'm not a, I'm not a keep a secrets kind of guy. So just tell us who your funding sources are. I think you ought to allow unlimited money into politics as long as you disclose where it comes from. And that needs to be the paper trail all the way back. If you form a, uh, if you follow Bidenomics 
and make a whole bunch of shell companies so you can funnel money through them. That's not open openness. That's not full disclosure. I would like to see who's how much is Soros given? How much are the other Democrats giving? Uh, Tom Meyer, uh, all the other folks. I just want to know. That's it. I don't say they can't. I just want to know who they are and what they're given to. And in the case of, uh, of the Supreme Court of Montana, that's not being disclosed. All right. Well, thanks for the call, sir. We appreciate it. And with that, we're up against another break. We have Skip waiting. By the way, it's open phones for another eight or nine minutes or so. And then Dr. John Lott will be joining us. And, of course, the Crime Prevention Research Center. He's uh, uh, been making world and national headlines, even with the president and Joe Rogan, if you can believe that. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're going to come right back with uh, with Skip's call when we return, hopefully yours, at 721-1290 right after this. John Test. Hi, I'm Carson Cressley. Of all the resources in the world, kindness is the most precious. For more than 140 years, American Humane has been working to protect animals in disasters, on farms, on the silver screen, and in zoos and aquariums caring for the world's vanishing creatures. You can help too by making humane choices every day. Visit AmericanHumane.org for simple ways to build a more caring and compassionate world for all of us. Hey, welcome back to Talk Back. 721-1290 is our number. We've got about five more minutes left in open phones. And let's fill it up. Let's get Skip on the line. Skip, good morning, sir. You're on Talk Back. What's up? And good morning, Peter. And I, I just thought that I'd call in and tell you that yesterday I had an experience I've never had in my entire life. And I'm three years older than you are, I okay. think. All right, go ahead. Have, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's back when... You know, um, Fred Flintstone was riding his dinosaur down the Zulu streets. And so here we are. Uh, uh, for the first time, I, I voted uh, other than going in and pulling the curtain on Election Day. And I went to the – I was down in the Valley County. I wanted people to know they could feel just fine going down to the old Marcus Daly Hospital, which is a county office building, and vote on the – it's on the north end of the first floor. It's easy access – Plenty of parking around the building, and and the flow the flow of people in and out was so smooth. I saw so many people I hadn't seen maybe in eight or ten years. It was kind of it was just a a, a great experience that I never figured it would happen. I, I it was hard for me to break that that habit of making sure I went and pulled the curtain on election day, and and I just wanted people in Valley County to know that the rooms are the room is set up so that. It, it's it's easy to do, you know, it's in and out and and uh it's it's easy to to for them to find your name uh and and give you your ballot, instruct you and, and, and I just wanted people to know in Valley County it's a it's a fine experience and it felt good to back my vote early in this election and I just I just thought I'd tell people that because uh it, it was it was uh, difficult to decide to go and do and then when I got done with that, I felt like, wow, that was that was really the right thing to do. So I just wanted to tell people in Valley County. All right, Skip. Ahead, no, okay. no. My question to you is, did you get an I voted sticker? I did, sir. Oh, good. Because I didn't get one. I, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to have to go down and talk with Bradley Seaman and get one. But anyway, but thanks thanks for the call, buddy. We appreciate it. All right, let's say uh, Harry's up next. Harry, good morning, sir. You are on TalkBack. What's up? Yeah, good morning, Peter. Yeah, a couple of things first. Just that uh, about Biden's and Kong garbage. We know how wonderful Trump called, or what he his uh, when he talks about Democrats, and how sweet and kind he is at all them. So it's, you know, <laughs> I'm hip. I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and uh, as for the dark money, uh, the, actually, Dave N uh, uh, is right, and also um, what the other one, the other guy called. Uh, but anyway, they. The idea that we, yeah, we should know who who is uh, giving money, but the Republicans didn't want it, and they pushed it. They said, "Well, no, you know, uh, the so they, they're getting what they want now. They, you know, it's it's you know what they say, payback is a bitch, you know. But uh, that the idea that you know, well, you didn't want it. No, people know who the donors are now. You're saying now it's the shoes on the other foot. So well, there's but the, anyway, the, uh, there, there's old expressions of what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Exactly. So. Yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. And the, finally, also, I uh, just 
I hope that this is a blowout. With either side, I you know, uh, hopefully you know, I want my side to win, of course. But whatever wins, I hope it's a blowout. That way. That we show the polls are all idiots, and that we can. Don't have, I'll die a happy man if I never have to hear <laughs> the polls say this. The polls say that. If I'll, I'll die a happy man if I never have to hear that again. So, I hear yeah, you. That, that, yeah, that way it just shows that the polling <laughs> is is worthless, and so we don't have to. You know, they can shut up about it. So. Well, uh, let's put it this way: if if polling is useless, people are wasting a lot of money on them. Yeah, well, it, you know, it, we'll see. That's why I say I hope it, hope it comes out that it is a blowout. That way they, they can just quit wasting their money and quit and waste our time. All right, man. Thanks for the call. Yeah, Appreciate fine. it. All right. We're, we, are, we are up against a, a break, and uh, well, we've got all of our callers in. That's good. Dr. John Lott is in the house, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be joining us here in just a minute, and uh, we'll be talking about uh, some actually uh, world and national headlines that Dr. Lott has caused by his research right here in good old Missoula, Montana at the Crime Prevention Research Center. So we're going to come right back and the phone lines will be open as well for Dr. Lott. We'll be back right after this. Dennis Bragg with weather update. Rain and snow likely today, mainly rain through the afternoon as we top out in the mid-40s. Little to no snow accumulation expected in the valleys, but an inch or so possible in the passes. There's just not a lot of moisture with this system. Trick-or-treaters will run into rain and cold down into the upper 30s by spook time. Eventually, we'll drop to the mid-20s by Friday morning. Then through the weekend, clouds with periods of rain occasionally mixed with snow, mainly at the higher elevations. Lows just below freezing, highs in the mid-40s through Sunday. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Good to have you along this morning. Any questions and over there, producing talk back, taking your phone calls and uh, joining us here in the studio this morning. We are honored once again to have Dr. John Lott, the Crime Prevention Research Center, which is headquartered right here in good old uh, River City, Missoula, Montana. And, uh, you, you and I had a very interesting conversation late one Friday night after you had, uh, uh, mentioned that you had uh, done some uh, some checking about crime numbers, and uh, and then published them in uh, uh, it, it was real, real clear real clear politics. Is that correct? Real clear investigations, right? right. Sorry, yeah, real clear investigations. All right. So so tell us, uh, g- give us the story. Tell us what happened. Yeah. Well, um, being kind of the nerdy guy I am, I had. You know, I look at the crime statistics when they're released by the FBI and the Bureau of Justice Statistics each year. And uh, I'd read through the press release and the report and didn't really seem to see, you know, uh, much surprising there. But then I was I downloaded the data file and I was noticing that it seemed to be different than what it was from the previous year. And so I'm the type of guy who keeps all these old files that I've downloaded and I was looking through them, and it was clear that not only had they changed, you know, or had the new data for 2023 coming out, but they had changed the data for earlier years. And uh, in 2022, uh, that data was released in October 2023. Uh, they had originally reported that violent crime had, and property crime had fallen. Violent crime had fallen by 2.1%. But in the new numbers where they changed the data for the earlier years, it turns out rather than a 2.1% drop, it was a 4.5% increase. And the reason why this is somewhat interesting is that for the last year, we've been having headlines in, in news articles across the country saying crime has fallen, but people mistakenly think that it's increasing. When you had David Muir uh, you know, do the fact check on Trump during the presidential debate, He was referring to the FBI data on reported crime. And the only final data we had when he made his report or when he made his comment was for 2022. And it turns out that the opposite was true. Rather than a drop, it had been an increase. But you would never know that from reading the FBI press release because they don't mention anything about earlier years. And, And when I went back and looked very carefully at the report itself, they have a one footnote on page 11 that's one sentence long that says we've updated the data for 2022. But no discussion about how it changed things, nothing. I had missed the footnote uh, the first time I looked through the report and, and no explanation. So we wrote them uh, multiple times to try to get an explanation for why they changed. They refused. They just didn't respond. And so I ended up writing up the piece. I'd tried to go to some of the media, but they weren't interested. And 
when I wrote it up, it just went viral. Um, uh, had and and even when President Trump did the interview with Joe Rogan, they ended up talking about it. I have that the, audio right here. So you are you you are you ready? Yeah, sure. Okay, here okay. we go. This is the it doesn't get much bigger than this, folks. When the president and Joe Rogan are discussing the work of the man who's standing right here at our studio. So let's listen to that audio right now. Is if this is going to be an actual real debate and not a propaganda exercise, yeah. if it's going to be a real debate, you have to fact check everybody. So like if they, someone they says maybe have, she yeah. thought there was no, right. which is also a problem. So it's one of two things. It's either it was not true, it was a lie on purpose, which is terrible, or it was the opposite. It was ignorance, which is also terrible. Well, Joe, when I said crime is soaring, he said, no, no, crime has gone down. I said, where did you hear that one? Crime has gone down. I mean, I'm debating with this guy. But I've had that. Well, there was amended FBI statistics that came out after that that yeah. showed that crime had gone up substantially. And by the way, the statistics were a fraud because when they put out the statistics, they didn't include some of the worst places. They didn't include some of the worst cities, or some of the most deadly places. But and when the real numbers came out, I turned out to be right. But I haven't. You, gotten... you turn out to be right, but then there's another problem. Unreported crime is way up. Because people have lost, look, the morale that the police department has in a lot of these cities where they've done this defund the police, right. These right. the morale of these it poor is, cops, it's been horrible. Yeah. It's the dumbest idea so of all bad. time. So but what they've done is they've they, they've made these cops feel terrible, they're, they're like good cops. I think cops are just like everybody else. Most of them are great. It's like everybody else. But if you run into one carpenter and he does a shitty job in your house, right. you say carpenters suck, but they don't suck. Most of them are great, and Police that's the key been, thing with cops. But the point yeah. is, like, they they did all of these things in this very foolish way, right. and these cops are suffering the consequences of it. And so, subsequently, what happens is a lot of crime is unreported. A lot of crime, like, you call the cops, they're too busy, they can't even get to you. Or your house got broken into, sorry, you know, it doesn't even make a report. There's a lot of people that they just give up. All right. And so that was the conversation that was sparked by your by your research and, and your reporting. Yeah, I know. It's kind of neat. Uh, you know, and Elon Musk and lots of other famous people retweeted the information that was there. So uh, and, um, you know, there I don't know how many dozens of news stories. The thing is, though. Kind of the mainstream legacy media still haven't reported that all their headlines that they've been having for the last year. You won't find anything in the New York Times or Washington Post or CNN. There's or no, there's no mea culpas. Right. No mention that, <laughs> oh, by the way, all those headlines that we've been having. Look, if you want to use the FBI numbers on reported crimes, you know, then the, you should acknowledge that it changed. I mean, you and I have talked before about the fact that there's this other measure, which is what Rogan's referring to, that's looking at total crimes, not just the number of crimes they report to police. And that's exploded over the last few years. We've had since 2020 uh, total violent crimes gone up by 55 percent. Rapes have gone up by 42 percent. Robberies by 63 percent. Aggravated assaults by 55 percent. Those are huge increases that have occurred and uh you know i i think people are more concerned about total crime than just the number of crimes reported but if you're going to use fbi data and you've been making a big deal about it for the last year you know you think somebody would just say oh by the way those headlines were wrong or it'd be of interest to report it but no and uh um you, you know but the bottom line to me also is that the fbi should be transparent I I can understand, you know, most reporters are lazy. They're just going to look at the the press release that's there. They're not going to, you know, maybe 95% do that. Maybe 5% look, you know, skim through the report. But they're not going to read the footnotes. They're not going to know what the importance of one sentence and one footnote on page 11 means. Which, or, which changes everything. Right, basically. yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's... Uh, but, you know, whether the FBI is just embarrassed that they had to change the numbers that were there and they didn't want to make a big deal about it or whatever, I, you know, I can understand. But but given how important this has been to the debate that's been going on, how it's been in headline after headline, and in any case, 
you think at least they'd be transparent and put it in their press release. We're going to come right back. We have all of our phone lines are open if you want to visit with uh, Dr. John Lott and a uh, man making quite literally nation and worldwide headlines uh, recently with his reporting and his research right out of Missoula, Montana. If you have a question, give us a call, 721-1290 or 1-800-568-5309. Or if you like to take advantage of the KGVO app, you can do that as well. We'll be right back. Call 123 Seamless. Need to replace your Social Security card? In most states, you can request one online with a My Social Security account. A My Social Security account gives you secure access to your personal earnings history and benefit status. You can also get a proof of income letter, estimate and apply for benefits, and more. Save time. Go online. Open a My Social Security account at ssa.gov slash my account. Social Security. Securing today and tomorrow. Small businesses are the heart of America. But you don't have to go it alone. As the nation's largest nonprofit resource of expert business mentoring, SCORE has helped millions of entrepreneurs build their businesses for free. Get the connections, education, and guidance you need with SCORE. We're ready to help. Find a mentor today at SCORE.org. Hey, welcome back to Talk Back. 721-1290 is our number. I'm Peter Christian. Uh, that is Nick Christensen right over there. Joining us here in the studio is uh, Dr. John Lott. Phone lines are open, by the way, if you have a question or a comment for uh, Dr. Lott, the Crime Prevention Research Center. Okay, now you have had uh, uh, lots of opportunities to uh, get exposure on of almost worldwide media. So sure, if you would, uh, some of the folks you've talked with. Uh, well, I mean, it's been interesting. Uh, Greg Gutfeld had had uh, two segments on consecutive nights on uh, on the research that was there. The, you know, Fox's The Five talked about it. Uh, 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 Gallagher at night on Fox talked about it. Uh, they have like four different news stories at Fox that uh, discussed it. I've uh, been on Newsmax, on One America News. Uh you know, but the mainstream media from the New York Times, the Washington Post, it, you know, despite all their headlines, crickets, they not even mentioning that, oh, by the way, it went up in 2022. And, you know, it, now the FBI is saying it fell by 3.5% in 2023. We'll see if they update those in the future. <laughs> but that's still smaller than the increase now that they're saying that occurred in 2022. So. Uh, we'll have to see, but uh, now I, I I would imagine uh, what what is it like? I, I realize you have lots of experience. Uh, those of us who just live and work in Missoula, Montana, keep our noses to the grindstone, don't really look look uh, too far ahead. We don't. We can't imagine what that's like to be interviewed by people like uh, like Gutfeld, Rogan, what, whatever to to uh, have that kind of exposure. But uh, you've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, I mean, this was not, I've had much bigger splashes before, you know, when my original research came out on concealed carry. Um, USA Today had a article on the front page about it. And uh, I, I started getting calls from my secretary at like, I can't remember, it was like seven o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, saying the media was going crazy. Uh I remember I was doing an interview with uh, ABC News on uh, my phone, and I had call waiting on the phone. And at <laughs> noon, every s- two seconds, it was going off for like the entire time I was talking to ABC. And apparently what had happened was Rush Limbaugh had uh, been talking about it on his radio show, and people were... As soon as I hung up the phone, I picked it up, and there was this woman from Orlando, Florida, who was calling up and just saying she had heard about it and called up information at the University of Chicago and wanted to call me up and talk to me about it. And I couldn't put the – anytime <laughs> I tried to put the phone down for the next hour, it would immediately mm. ring as soon as I put it down. You know, it just shows the power that Rush Limbaugh had at that time. But uh, uh, so anyway, it uh, – you know, and I, I, you know, because of that research, I was on everybody from Howard Stern to, you know, you name it. But it was just crazy. And uh, I, I would imagine the Crime Prevention Research Center website probably just blew up, right? It did. Uh, for a while, uh, you couldn't 
I couldn't log on to the site <laughs> because the server was overwhelmed. So I don't know. I guess we need a more powerful server or something. But well, that's that, that that's a positive problem. All right, <laughs> let let's uh, let's get Rick on the line. Rick, good morning. You're on with Doctor John Lott. Go ahead, please. Hey, Doc. I don't really have a question, Doctor. I have a comment. Uh, the comment is: I can't believe the government and the news media. They're doing a disservice to the American people. In fact, I think they believe we're somewhat stupid because on a nightly basis, they they report on crimes like smash and grabs in inner cities. And inner city people are reporting all the time on the news how the crime has just risen is so terrible. And uh, I think they do a disservice because we see it with our own eyes. Uh, We don't see it that bad in Montana, but we really see it bad in inner city Chicago, New York, Los Angeles. And I'd like you to comment on their, why the government and the media think that the American people don't see this and why our, our, our belief in government and the media has gone down so bad. And do you see that if Trump is elected that any of this might change or if it's something that is just the way society is now, and uh, please right. don't hang up okay. on me. I sure. Okay. Well, Thank, you know, Gallup call. just had a survey recently that showed that uh, uh, you know, kind of confidence in the news media is at its lowest that they've ever recorded. Uh, you know, as far as the news media coverage, uh, it's basically local news that covers the crime, uh, except for maybe Fox. Uh, and some of the conservative media, but the national media, you know, legacy media, they have not been covering crime a lot. But as you say, you know, in many parts of the country, I travel, I go to different major cities, you know, New York or D.C. or Chicago. And if you go into a CVS or a Walgreens in those places, you'll see everything's behind plexiglass. You know that that wasn't true a few years ago. People who are shopping there know that wasn't true a few years ago. Uh, And they know that it's costly. I mean, you want to go and buy something, you have to have a clerk come over, unlock it for you, stand next to you while you go and read the different packages. It's kind of uncomfortable as a customer there. You know, I wouldn't spend as long trying to figure out what to buy as I would have previously. Uh and it's very costly. And the only reason why they're doing it is because of the amount of theft that's increasing. And so, uh, you know, people know that that wasn't true a few years ago. Uh, and, you know, it's it's uh, I think they want to protect the Democrats. I think there are two reasons why the media is like this. And unfortunately, I think uh, the government's gotten corrupt with regard to data uh, gathering and reporting. But. They want to protect the Democrats, but also it's the issue of illegals. Uh, Many Democrats have made it explicit. They said, look, crime is falling despite the fact that we have many, many millions of illegal aliens coming into the country. So illegals must not be committing much crime, Uh, you know, and and obviously crime has been going up fairly dramatically while we've been having this. I mean, uh, I think there are other reasons why crime is also going up. But uh, I think those are the two reasons why they want to do it. And whether it'll change, you know, I don't know. I, I, when I first started dealing a lot with the media, maybe 30, 35 years ago, uh, you know, I get calls from the New York Times or the Washington Post or whatever. And uh, there used to be this desire to get people on both sides of the issue. And now you read articles in the mainstream media and they only interview people on one side of the issue. You would think there's nobody on the other side. It, on ceased, these things. it, it ceased to be journalism. Uh, right. I mean, even the Missoulian, the news articles here, you read a lot of the things there. They only seem to be able to find people on one side of the issue that's there. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's... I don't know whether they want people to think that there's not even anybody that wants to argue on the other side. Uh, But I think it's a real disservice and it makes uh, 
Yeah, it's part of what's led to the polarization that we have. We're going to come right back. Uh, we we have uh, Skip waiting to visit with you and more calls coming in for Dr. John Lott. He's uh, joining us here in the studio this morning. He made a lot of, uh, uh, if you will, national and even world headlines with uh, his research about FBI crime data that had not been properly uh, released. And, of course, his research forced it out into the light, and a lot of things have changed. So we're going to come right back. We'll have more with uh, Dr. Lott here in a moment. You know what? It- okay, we're back. This is Talkback. 721-1290 is our number. I'm Peter Christian, by the way. That's Nick Christensen taking your phone calls. Dr. John Lott is in the studio with us this morning. He's uh, made headlines around the world here in the last couple of weeks, and we have callers that want to visit with you. Skip, good morning. You're on with Dr. Lott. Go ahead. Thank you, Peter. Good morning, Dr. Lott. Good morning. Thanks for coming on and reviewing so many things. And uh, I love the fact that you were you were talking about how the media protects the, the Democrats. And so I, I wanted to tell you that our sheriff down here in Ravalli County, uh, Steve Holton, his name is, he, he was at a pachyderm association meeting uh, as a speaker oh, just a, a short few months ago. And uh, was explaining to us that, and it just has to do with with uh, protecting our schools and our children here, uh, and it, that he believed after crunching the numbers and looking at the statistics, especially response times, that there was an incident that uh, having an armed resource officer in each school is the way I believe he he explained it was was the best thing that we could do here, uh, and in the way our schools are set up. And I thought I'd just. I'd start with that and see if you had, if you could just give us just a, a few cliff notes on uh, if that's if that sounds good to you, and if there's a couple other things that, especially the least money spent for the most impact on protecting our schools, that you might uh, let us know about or remind us about. I appreciate okay, it. sure. Thank you. Thanks. For well, the call. I mean, I think the best way to do it is just to allow some teachers to be able to carry concealed there. Look, if you're going to have a police officer in the schools, my advice is please don't have them in uniform. If you have somebody in uniform, you give the attackers real tactical advantages. Uh, You know, they they know that that will be the only person at the school who's armed. And uh, the attacker then can either wait for that person to leave that particular building uh, or they can move on to another building themselves to go and do the attack. Or if they're going to take out one person first, they're going to take out the one person in uniform who's the only person that's armed because they know that once they've taken that person out, they'll have free reign to go after other people there. Now, you know, the way I often phrase it is we have air marshals on planes. Would you put the air marshals in uniform? Why don't we put air marshals in uniform? I think everybody knows why we don't put air marshals in uniform because if you put them in uniform – then the terrorists would know who the one person is on the plane that they have to worry about, and they'd take that person out before they try to take over the plane. And the same principle applies with regard to protecting schools. So if you're going to have a police officer there, make them blend in, make them look like a regular staffer or the PE coach or something that's there at the at the school, and uh, and and make it so that the attackers can't identify who they are. Um, you know, I, I we've done research looking at all uh, school shootings in the United States from 2000 on, everything from an accidental discharge where nobody's injured all the way up to a mass public shooting. Uh, and there are well over 10,000 schools in the United States that have armed teachers and staff. We have it in in 20 states. Even Montana has a few schools uh, that has it. And um, you look over that time and there has not been a single attack where anybody's been wounded or killed at any school that has an armed teacher. All the attacks have been at uh, other schools that don't have that, even some with uh, with with uh, school resource officers uh, have had attacks that have taken place. And, you know, rather than having a sign in front of the school that says the school is a gun-free zone, my advice is have a sign in front of the school that says, warning, select teachers and staff at this school are carrying concealed and will use the guns to protect the students and others there at the school. Now, have have, have there been schools that have taken your advice and have that? 
posted somewhere. Oh, yeah. No, there are lots of schools around the country. All right. I I had an op-ed in the New York, in the Wall Street Journal in, I think, 1998, um, where I was kind of like the first person to come out and talk about this. You wouldn't believe the amount of hate mail I got <laughs> at that time. And, uh, <clears throat> um, uh, you know, except for a few conservative talk radio show hosts, I was alone. Even the NRA attacked me at the time for doing that. And, uh, you know, but now we have uh, 20 states that ha- uh, have armed teachers and staff there at the schools. And so, you know, the debate has changed a lot on this, but we still have a ways to go. And I, I do know that um, when it comes to a school shooting, uh, there, there are certain parameters that, that almost go into every, you know, into every school shooting. That, yeah, yeah. The you things know, you, you read talked the di- about a lot. Yeah, no, we've talked about, you know, you read the diaries and manifestos for these mass murderers. You know, they may be crazy in some sense, but they're not stupid. Their goal is to get media coverage. They know the more people they kill, uh, the more media coverage they're going to get. And they know if they go to a place where their victims can't defend themselves, they're going to be able to go and kill more people and get more media coverage. They explicitly say that. And the media just refuses to to discuss those parts of their manifestos and diaries. We're going to come right back after the top of the hour. We have uh, callers waiting for Dr. This is Talkback, 721-1290 or 1-800-568-5309. This is News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 98.3 FM, KGVO, Missoula's news and weather station. Welcome back, everybody. Hour number two of Talkback for this Halloween day, Thursday, October 31st. And uh, Talkback is brought to you this morning by 123 Seamless Gutters, offering gutter installations, repairs, and more. They take care of your gutter so you don't have to. 406-240-2669, protecting the foundation of your future. Phillips Janitorial offers both residential and commercial cleaning for your home and your business. Give them a call today. Phillips Janitorial, 406-260-6617. Why West Storage is out of the Y on Two Smokes Way. If you need storage, their number is 406-510-0590 because at Y West they are making room for you. And Harrington Surgical Supply, where you can feel confident in their discreet and knowledgeable guidance on a multitude of products and medical supplies. The views and opinions expressed on TalkBack are not those of the staff, management, or advertisers. Okay, welcome back. We're having a great conversation with Dr. John Lott from the Crime Prevention Research Center, which is headquartered here in Missoula. Uh, he's made some national and world headlines recently, uh, even with with the president, a former President Trump and Joe Rogan discussing his work. Uh, we just played that clip a little while ago. But folks have been waiting all the way through the top of the hour break to visit with you, Dr. Lott. So let's get uh, let's get Jeff on the line. Jeff, good morning, sir. You're on Talk Back with Dr. John Lott. Go ahead. Hey, good morning. And I apologize if there's any noise in the background. I'm doing some food pickup work up here. Uh, I just wanted to know two things, Dr. Lott. First of all, you're not alone in terms of... Uh, not being recognized or finding data that has actually uh, been completely mischaracterized. I follow a guy named uh, Roger Pilkey Jr., who does a lot of climate work, and he's a uh, he's a climate scientist. Out he was out of uh, CU Boulder in Colorado, and he now actually just retired and uh, and he firmly believes in, in uh, global warming, but he just is utterly amazed at the lack of actual science in the climate community. And he and a compatriot several years ago actually compiled a uh, a database that was completely valid, but he found that NASA in the intervening years has that corrupted it. And so they're using a corrupt database to try to say that billion-dollar disasters due to, uh, you know, hurricanes and such have increased over the years when actually they haven't. Right. And he's gone to war on this because he wants to make sure that people are using valid data. You know, he doesn't... Didn't, sure. Not accept, uh, upset at the uh, at the results, but use data that's accurate. So right. it's all over the place in terms of having an accurate data. Sure. Then, I, I used to teach uh, uh, environmental regulation when I was at Wharton uh, and then at University of Chicago. But, uh, you know, so I'm familiar with some of that debate. I mean, you want to control for the fact that maybe people may be building more right on beaches or building right next to rivers or whatever than they used to. 
uh, you know, when you want to look at damage. But if you look at per capita deaths, uh, obviously that's uh, plummeted uh, over time with regard to storms. But look, uh, I've been on uh, KGVO many times in the past and you have, uh, you know, the crime data. I don't trust a lot of the data that comes out of the government these days. Anything on hate crimes, I doubt. I've talked. You can go to our website at crimeresearch.org and see the discussions I've had about uh, uh, the FBI data on active shootings. Um, You know, when I worked in the Department of Justice, uh, it was just very politicized in terms of the FBI even giving people in the Department of Justice access to data. Uh, that they thought might not be politically convenient for them, um, you know, and and you know, even when you'd find errors, even when you could get them to admit that there was an error in their data, uh, you know, years later they still haven't fixed it. Um, and so, you know, uh, to me, you just have to do a massive house cleaning that's there uh, because so much of the debate. You know, I don't know how people can be well informed if the data that the government puts out is corrupted in different ways. Bingo. And uh, just one anecdote uh, to before I leave you is uh, I was reading an article about a week ago on a, uh, a Democrat running for Congress, uh, Lucas Vance, I think his name is, in uh, Missouri. And he was out on a shooting event with an AR 15 on somebody's right. private property. And uh, he, he probably saw this. Yeah, he sure. Uh, uh, which I guess the targets were really close. I can't remember how far, but you were shooting with an AR-15 at close targets, which is never a good idea. And either a bullet or some uh, shrapnel ricocheted and hit a reporter in the arm. But you don't hear anything about that on the national media because it was a Democrat who accidentally shot a repo- uh, reporter. Uh, if it had been a Republican, I imagine that it would Well, I saw some confused. stories on it, but it didn't mention the political affiliation of the of the candidate. But anyway, I mean, it, it's not just an AR-15. You, you know, you have a rifle or something. Obviously, uh, the bullet goes much faster with a rifle than it does with a handgun. And so, you know, want to have the things a little ways away. But anyway, I uh, appreciate your question. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, Thanks. and you know that AR-15s are the devil incarnate. So yeah, no. the other rifles <laughs> right, <good>. sure. <laughs> All right, we're, we're, we're up against a break. We're going to come right back. We have Kevin, Joe. We also have an app question to share with you, people using the KGVO app. We appreciate that. And several other phone lines open. Uh, Dr. Lott's going to be with us till 945 this morning. So if you have a question or a comment, uh, give us a call. We'll be right back after this. Call 123 Seamless. Dennis Bragg with weather update. Rain and snow likely today, mainly rain through the afternoon as we top out in the mid 40s. Little to no snow accumulation expected in the valleys, but an inch or so possible in the passes. There's just not a lot of moisture with this system. Trick or treaters will run into rain and cold down into the upper 30s by spook time. Eventually, we'll drop to the mid 20s by Friday morning. Then through the weekend, clouds with periods of rain occasionally mixed with snow, mainly at the higher elevations. Lows just below freezing, highs in the mid 40s through Sunday. How was your job to school? Cool. Let me tell you, I had to get my iced coffee first. I just can't seem to put it down. My favorite rapper just announced a tour. My phone was buzzing like crazy. I'm so excited. I had to text all my friends right then to talk about it. Then someone started calling me and... Let's try that again. I turned my phone off right away. I never drive distracted. Visit stoptextstoprex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Hey, welcome back. This is Talk Back. I'm Peter Christian, by the way, Nick Christensen, uh, taking your phone calls this morning, producing Talk Back every day. And Dr. John Lott is here in the studio with us this morning from the Crime Prevention Research Center, the website crimeresearch.org. Let's get Kevin on the line. Kevin, thanks for holding. You're on with Dr. Lott. Go ahead. Oh, good morning, everybody, and good morning, Dr. Locke. Good morning. Hey, I, um, last time I spoke with you uh, was a while back and asked you if you ever uh, looked at the Missoula City County Public Report um, website. It's where they list uh, the activities, uh, not only for the last 24 hours, but up to the last week. There's a daily report on there. Have you looked at that? Uh, not really much. I mean, I'm more trying to deal with national numbers, uh, or state. And I, I mean, I know I live here and <laughs> I've looked at it a couple of times. I remember your call. Uh, I think you had something about the amount of information that was on there. And I think we had somebody 
who was connected with this uh, with the city government call up after you and kind of say that that information was in fact available but i just vaguely remember the discussion right it's like the responding units they used to give you uh how many uh, fire trucks or a police officer or an ambulance would show up at the uh incident and and they don't do that no more um anyway um the, the reason why is i'm asking you about this is because Fortunately for us, we have this uh, information available, so you can see where the crime in the Missoula area is impacted. And right. there's three areas that are impacted, and there's and it's just um, I like the transparency, okay? But sometimes this information is suppressed, and I under and maybe there's a reason why it's being suppressed. Do you? And and I know like with Peter, uh, they'll he'll uh, agree this. Uh, they used to have a reporter that be on the scene reporter years ago that would go and report if there was a car accident, if there was a uh, you know a fire, or if there was a, you know blockage of traffic and everything, and advise people to stay away from this area. And uh, unfortunately, you know it's a very it's expensive. It costs a lot of money, and there's a lot of uh, advertisers that didn't keep up with uh, paying for the cost of that. I understand that, but it just seems like in our country right now, we got people that are causing issues, um, such as Gavin Newsom saying, we're not going to prosecute people if they go and st steal up to $950, right? Well, that somehow g goes and it, people get in their minds from California that it's throughout the, the whole United States. And so there's a lot of people that are doing things that are not being held accountable or taking responsibility for it. Um, well, we you got, got well, look, I mean, uh, there are a lot of places around the United States which have similar rules, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, but you also have uh, district attorneys in many parts of the country are refusing to prosecute those types of criminals. So you look for cities over a million in population. Uh, the arrest rate in 2022 for for total property crime was like one percent, and 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 just because somebody's arrested doesn't mean mm -hmm. that they're going to be charged, let alone prosecuted or convicted. And so, you know, it's obviously it's not just Los Angeles. Uh, you have other cities that are over a million that fall in that category. Uh, that criminals have very little to worry about in terms of facing punishment uh, there. And so you can see people taking garbage bags into stores in Chicago or in uh, D.C. or other places around the country uh, and, you know, going across the street and selling the products that they just stole or going on eBay and selling them. Well, you know, even in Missoula here, I witnessed um, two incidents. One was was at a um, chain of uh, uh, gas stations where somebody went, and an adult went and grabbed a handful of candy, put in their pocket, mm -hmm. and went out the door. Right. I mentioned to the cashier what I just witnessed, and he says, "Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it. Corporate says we can't uh, touch them." Right? No, I, said, I mean well, there is that attitude, <clears throat> and you have places like California that. Uh, even passed a law uh, penalizing uh, uh, stores whose employees would try to stop people uh, from committing those types of crimes. Fortunately, the rest of the country isn't like that. But you have liability rules and other things that are there uh, that make it difficult for companies to go in and, and stop those types of thefts. And, of course, that just means that everybody else pays higher prices for it. They have to make it up someplace. I mean, the margin... It, Grocery stores and others, maybe like one or two percent. You go and steal something. There's a lot of products that they're going to have to raise the prices on. You know, uh, maybe doubling their margin from one percent to two percent uh, to compensate for that item that was stolen. Uh, so we're all paying for that uh, type of theft that occurs. It just seems like back in my day, a lot of this didn't occur. If it did yeah, occur. Sure. Um, you had repercussions. You had consequences right, to I deal agree. with. And now I we, we don't know more. I agree. You know? I agree. You know, if you if you want to reduce crime, it's not rocket science. You just have to make it that, as you say, consequences. The riskier it is for criminals to commit crime with higher arrest rates and higher conviction rates and longer prison sentences, the less crime you're going to have. Unfortunately, not everybody feels the same way that you and I do on, on that type of issue. 
Okay, well, anyway, I thought I'd bring that up, and uh, I just uh, wish there was more transparency I agree. In, in this day and age. So, okay, have a good day. Thanks Thank you. for the call, sir. Let's get uh, Joe on the line next. Joe, good morning, <clears throat> sir. You're on Talk Back with Dr. Lott. Go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to share uh, a little something that I heard on Red Eye Radio this morning about uh, the FBI uh, having a couple of honeypots in the Trump administration in 2015 when he announced he was going to run. And there were some whistleblowers. I know there's already been some FBI whistleblowers who have testified and IRS uh, whistleblowers that they knew that the Hunter laptop was well, sure. real. They knew back right in away. 2019. In 2019. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, but anyway, this honeypot deal, they were um, looking, they were doing a fishing expedition on the Trump administration, and they had... The Trump informants. campaign at the time, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then the, this uh, there was this shooting at a school, what, a couple months ago, a high school kid. I think they took care of that within one minute because there was an armed person, and they disarmed him. Right. They, had a, they actually minute. had a, a school resource officer who stopped the attack, Um Look, I'm not saying that school resource officers can't be beneficial. Obviously, they can be. I'm just saying that you're less likely to even have an attack to begin with if the if the attackers don't know it who it is that they have to worry about who can be armed. You have somebody in uniform. You give real tactical advantages uh, to the to the attackers there, and and I don't see any reason why we should be giving them those advantages. But uh, but yeah. Go ahead. This this Mueller investigation and all this uh, FBI infiltration of the Trump campaign and right. Uh, I often you know, got when I worked in the Department of Justice. I often Twitter. got asked by people about uh, how is it that you could have the FBI uh, and CIA basically spy on a presidential campaign and not have whistleblowers or leakers at the time talking about that and and. The answer is pretty simple, and that is if everybody agrees with everybody else politically who's involved in that, and they all think that they're doing, you know, the Lord's work there to go and stop a horrible person, uh, you know, then you can have things like that happen. Uh, well, you know, there are lots uh, of great I mean, people that work at the FBI. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of the people at the top uh, tend to be very similar in terms of their political views about the world. And I think we need more diversity uh, in terms of views uh, in a lot of these government agencies. I Look, when I worked in the Department of Justice, uh, I mainly just had interactions with the data people. And so I can't make you know, strong claims by any means about parts of the FBI outside of the data. But the data people came across to me as true believers. I mean, they, you know, when I worked in the federal government in the 1980s, if I were to go and point out data errors, people would fix them. Uh, when I would point those out when I was working in 2020 or 2021, uh, you know, they would fight you tooth and nail against uh, being able to look at the data and they'd fight you tooth and nail against fixing errors even when they would acknowledge that an error existed. So I was just going to make one more point. Apparently uh, they felt it was pretty significant that Comey kept this operation against the Trump campaign off the books. There are no records of it. Whereas mm -hmm. most even secret uh, FBI investigations are on the books. This one was not. Well, I, I don't know enough about it, but it, if it's true, then that would be evidence of what we call a guilty mind. Hey, we're going to come right back. We're a little bit past a break. Thanks for the call. We appreciate it. We have an app question and Susan waiting on the line. By the way, Dr. Lott's going to be with us till 945 this morning. So if you have a question or comment, uh, get those phone lines ringing. 721-1290 is our number. We'll be right back. Montana State News Network. I'm Dennis Bragg. We may learn more today about the suspect who's been arrested in connection with the brutal murder of Destin Kajersum, who was killed earlier this month while camping up the Gallatin. 
Dowling County Sheriff's Office announced late yesterday afternoon that it had apprehended a suspect on unrelated charges and he was cooperating with investigators. No formal charges have been filed and the Sheriff's Department says it has no further information to release at this time. If you feel excitement in the air today, it's not because we're finally almost done with a turbid election season. It's because we finally reached the eve of the biggest Montana lottery game of the year. Will Gordon has details from Bozeman. The hottest ticket in Montana is about to go on sale and it's going to be wild. The Montana Lottery announced Montana Millionaire tickets will be going on sale this Friday, November 1st. Montana Millionaire tickets sold out in less than five hours in 2023 and 2024 could be even faster. There are some big changes for 2024's Montana Millionaire, including multiple $1 million grand prizes, instant winners, and a quarter million Monday winner. These tickets go fast, so don't miss out. In Bozeman, Will Gordon, Montana News Network. Outside of the lottery, book readers from across western Montana and even a few collectors from east of the divide will be looking to get lucky as they head to Fort Missoula this weekend to sort through tens of thousands of books during one of the largest sales in the state. Historical Museum at Fort Missoula Assistant Director Carolyn Thompson says the sale gets lots of shoppers looking for variety. We sure do, and we really have everything across the board. So please come and visit the sale and take a look at all of your options. The sale runs through Sunday. Crop yields for Montana farmers down in some categories this fall, with many operators working around drought, high fuel costs, and fluctuating prices. The Montana Wheat and Barley Commission reporting all wheat production for 2025 hit 172 million bushels. That's off 7% from last year. Winter wheat was up 7%. Spring wheat off 23%, with barley production off by as much as 28 percent this is the montana state news network if i could be you and you could be me for just one hour if you could find a way to get inside each other's mind walk a mile in my shoes walk a mile in my shoes walk, walk a mile, mile in, in my, my shoes. shoes we've all felt left out and for some that feeling lasts more than a moment we can change that learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org brought to you by the ad council Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam, ran right into the side of the saloon. Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. <laughs> 721 is our number. Uh, you, you guys don't get these uh, these, these uh, little conversations that we have here in the studio. That's okay. Uh, Nick, we have an app question. Go ahead, please. Yeah, from Sandy. She said, a few years ago, I approached Missoula City Council to try and get us to recommend Hunter's Safety and the Be Safe program be allowed in Missoula schools. I pretty much got torn apart and it failed drastically. Is this something I should try to pursue again? Would you recommend a different program or should I give up on it? My goal is for kids uh, to know not to touch a gun if they find one, uh, but also have the opportunities to learn firearm and hunter safety if they're interested. I think it's a valuable thing to teach people. Uh, surely the gun ownership rate in uh, Montana, maybe not quite as high in Missoula, is, is high. But, uh, you know, I don't, you know, just as a likely outcome, I think uh, obviously the political views of the city council here might be hostile to it. I'm not sure how I, successful you'll be. I will tell you this. When I, when I was a kid, hunter safety was taught in the schools, sure. right? And now... And you turned out okay. Well, I, 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 <laughs> I'm not too weird. But anyway, but uh, uh, now hunter safety programs are primarily handled through Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Right. And the youngsters can take uh, safety lessons there. And I will tell you, a couple of years ago, um, you know, one, of, one of our uh, elementary and middle schools, Hawthorne Elementary, uh, not not Hawthorne, um, oh darn. Anyway, one, one of them had a, a special firearms introduction program to preschool kids, kindergartens, and first graders. Right. And uh, they said it was an absolute success. The parents loved it. The kids learned a lot. Mm. There, there, wasn't, there wasn't any any weirdness going on. And uh, I, I'm just thinking, why, why, why can't we have well, hunter again, safety in schools? Go ahead. Yes, yeah, Sandy's asking, should I try to pursue again? Yes. Would you recommend a different program or should I give up on it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the program is fine. And, you know, I'm just saying uh, it's kind of like Sisyphus trying to roll the, the boulder up the mountain there. Uh, I'm just saying that the political views of the 
of the powers that be here in the city are likely to be more hostile. But, you know, I wish you luck on doing it. And I think that the comments that uh, Peter's making here show that there is a constituency there, even yeah. if... Uh, yeah, this, the school that held that, uh, that that presentation was Hellgate Elementary. Uh-huh. So there you go. All right. So let's uh, let's continue on. Susan's on the line. Susan, good morning. You're on with Dr. Lott. Go ahead, please. <clears throat> well, first of all, I want to thank you for your research. And I invite you to an election night party at West Side Lanes. There are a lot of people that we have running for various offices locally that are retired law enforcement officers. And um, safety has been a a theme throughout this election um, cycle. A lot of people feel very unsafe in Missoula. Um, And I have gone before the school board on numerous, not numerous occasions, on several occasions, asking them to allow uh, concealed carry in the schools for their, right. uh, uh, some of their people. And there's been absolutely no support. And uh, I'm of the thinking that there's no point in even wasting my breath to go before the school board about anything, even though half of my taxes go to the public schools. And I think that is common. I would like to know if you have done any kind of studies about um, school, about safety, gun safety across the United States. So what is the attitude of school, school boards across the country? Have you done any studies about that? And right. I'm going to get off the Okay, thanks. Thanks, Susan. Well, I mean, yeah, generally, uh, school boards tend to be fairly liberal, and they're hostile to this. Uh, one of the things that you see is that um, when you have state laws that leave it up to the school boards uh, to go and determine whether or not there'll be armed teachers there, most of them don't take advantage of it. On the other hand, if you have uh, a state like Utah or New Hampshire where any teacher who has a concealed carry permit is legally allowed to carry there at school, essentially all the schools have somebody who's going to be carrying. At least one person in all those schools are are carrying. Um, You know, you brought up to begin with the kind of the concern about safety. Uh, Gallup had a survey in March uh, that indicated that crime and violence was the number two issue of concern that people had. Uh, obviously, that ties in a lot with illegal immigration. You know, we recently uh, had a report that finally came out uh, from uh, Department of Homeland Security that indicated that um, so they have uh, uh, non so-called non-detained individuals, individuals that come through ICE who are uh, who are let go then into the country. And of the 7.4 million people that have been so-called not detained, uh, there have been about 650,000 of them uh, had criminal records. Uh, two-thirds of those had actually been convicted of crimes. Uh, the other third had been charged but had escaped their country before they could be uh, convicted. Uh, you had something like 13,500 murderers, people that have been convicted of murders in their country. Uh, you had even more rapists uh, that have been uh, convict- people convicted, even more who had been charged. Um, so, you know, <clears throat> we have real crime type issues that are there. Even Bill Clinton, uh, when he was talking about Lake and Riley, and he's made this comment several times, he said, well, you know, uh, she'd still be alive if the person had been properly checked uh, before he came into the country, that he wasn't checked. Uh, and so we have, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of people. And this is, see, we have different categories of illegals coming in. You have th- those who voluntarily turn themselves in uh, to ICE. You have those who are caught. So uh, about 80% of the people that go through ICE 
are voluntarily turn themselves in. 20% are caught. But then you have other categories. You have so-called gotaways, people that we see coming across but we don't catch, and people who we never even see coming across, which may be many millions more. And the problem is is that uh, the 80% that voluntarily turn themselves in are the ones that we shouldn't be concerned about. You know, those are the ones that are less likely to have a criminal record. Uh, and so this 650,000 is pretty much from that 20% that's there. And so these large numbers of got- gotaways who we never caught don't go through the system at all or the ones that we never see come across. They're probably even the worst ones that are there. And uh, and so that 650,000 is an underestimate of the real problem. Okay, with that, we're going to come right back. 721-1290 is our number. Kathy is waiting to visit with you. And uh, remember, Dr. Lott will be with us till 945 this morning. So if you have a question or comment. bumped by a congressman. (laughs) (laughs) Of all people. (laughs) We're we're going to come right back after this quick timeout. Hey, welcome back to Talk Back. And for the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to be visiting with uh, Dr. John Lott from the Crime Prevention Research Center. CrimeResearch.org is the website. Kathy has been waiting. Kathy, good morning. You're on with Dr. Lott. Go ahead. Well, good morning. Um, I really wasn't going to call in, but Sandra Vasika brought up a topic that um, I'm kind of a little bit familiar with. It was Hillgate Elementary that did the uh, gun safety education. Right, right. And I'd like to say kudos to that school for doing that. Um, I do think that she needs to pursue that more. Um, and kind of my basis on that is that, and I don't know if Dr. Lott has done any research on uh, the accidents and issues up with a one-on-one uh shootings between young people um but i do know this year we have had several 15 year olds shoot and kill 12 year olds and i think if they were more familiar with what's going on with guns they might not associate it with um the shootings with uh game boys and that sort of thing that you shoot somebody and they stay alive maybe they'd understand that when you shoot somebody they die and um, so I don't know if this is nationwide, but I know Montana has had several of those situations. And um, I think not only school shootings, but uh, individual shootings among our younger generation is very, very much a concern for me. So that's more my comment. And, and if you haven't done something like that. No, no, I've looked at that data. I, I mean, you know, okay. you, know, you know, you can go to the Centers for Disease Control website and if you look at uh, accidental gun deaths involving children under age 10, let's say over the last decade, uh, you'll find something in the 30 range on average per year. 30 uh, accidental shootings where a child under 10 dies from an accidental gunshot. Most of those are actually accidental shots by an adult, usually in their mid to late 20s who have criminal records, who are alcoholics or drug addicts. And so you're talking about something around eight to 10 of those a year involve a a child firing the gun. Uh, If you look at under age 15, uh, you're talking about something that would be maybe around uh, mid fifties total for the United, this is for the United States as a whole, these numbers. Uh, So, you know, you think about it and uh, it's still very rare. I mean, uh, you know, you're talking about over half of American households uh, owning a gun. Uh, the rate of gun ownership in families that have kids is actually even above uh, what it is for the national average. Um, you know, you have this, uh, something like 95 children uh, under age five who drowned in bathtubs. Uh, you have about... Uh, 36 or so children under age five who drowned in five gallon water buckets each year. You know, so you have children who die at higher rates from other things that are in the home than you have from accidental gunshots. In fact, uh, you have children are more likely to die from lightning strikes uh, than they are to die uh, from uh, accidental gunshots. Now, What's often confused sometimes in the initial media reports is whether it's an accident or whether you have a gang fight or something else that's going on. 
Uh, the media often doesn't distinguish between those types of things. Uh, I'm dealing with data that you have uh, medical examiner reports. And, uh, and so, you know, I, my, you know I, I'm all for education on this stuff, as we talked about earlier. I think it's fine. I think it's useful. And if the woman, Sandra, is willing to go and spend the time, that's great to go and do it. I just was trying to say there may be other parts of the state where she'd get a, mo- a warmer reception for what she's trying to push than here in Missoula. And she may have other things to do with her time. I wasn't <laughs> trying to discourage well, her. Well, she's a, she's a busy mom and a city councilor. Yeah, so, sure. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so uh, all, the, all the more power to her. I'm just saying you need to keep these things in perspective. And, you know, when I go and give talks at universities around the country or whatever, I'll ask students, I say, how many kids do you think die from accidental gunshots? And they'll have numbers like a thousand or something like that uh, each year. And they're pretty shocked to find uh, that the Centers for Disease Control numbers are as low as they are. And, and they're issues even we've talked a lot about the politicization of data and uh, i think under the biden administration there's been some concerns that they've even been corrupting that data but it's still it's still very low compared to other ways that children die kathy thanks for the call we're going to come right back dave is waiting and uh, only about uh, five minutes left in our time with uh, with dr lott so give us a call 721-1290 we'll be right back after this a california Hi, I'm Carson Kressley. Of all the resources in the world, kindness is the most precious. For more than 140 years, American Humane has been working to protect animals in disasters, on farms, on the silver screen, and in zoos and aquariums caring for the world's vanishing creatures. You can help, too, by making humane choices every day. Visit AmericanHumane.org for simple ways to build a more caring and compassionate world for all of us. Hey, we are back on Talk Back. Just a few precious minutes left with uh, Dr. John Lott, who's here in the studio with us. And Dave has been waiting. Dave, good morning. You're on. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good morning. You know, some people think to fix the border would just build the whole wall. But, uh, you know, about the getaways, the gotaways, um, you know, there are thousands of holes in that wall already, the brand new wall. And, uh, you know, San Diego is building a second wall, I guess. Uh, I, I don't think a wall by itself is going to fix fix the, the, the gotaways that, that sneak over. They're going to either uh, cut a hole in the wall or they can go under it or they go over it. I mean, there has to be more to the solution than just, just the wall. Nobody okay, said thanks, that. Dave. Nobody was saying that. But look, uh, during the Biden administration, 90% of the border agents, actually about 94% of the border agents, that used to patrol the border have been reassigned to processing uh, the illegals that are coming in. So, and on top of that, uh, the Biden administration recently admitted that uh, because they have these passive monitoring systems, uh, they've been saying that 30% of the passive monitoring systems are not working and they haven't been fixed, haven't been fixed for years under the Biden administration. And, so we have no clue how many are coming across. Uh, you know, we have the gotaways, but what happens is apparently the drug cartels know what parts of the border aren't being patrolled and the passive systems aren't even working there. And so they're directing the people to come across in those areas. You know, can you cut holes in metal walls? You yeah, know, sure. Uh, but hopefully uh, you would have repair units that are there. The Biden administration not only has sold for scrap, you know, at pennies on the dollar, uh, a lot of the uh, the building equipment for walls, but they are refusing to spend any money on repairing the holes in the existing wall that's there. And so, you know, it's going to be part of an overall system, but the wall surely slows it down, makes it more difficult for them to come through. And you see where they're coming through. They're coming through in places where there's not the wall. Dr. Lott, it's always a pleasure, and thank you uh, for being with us. I know how incredibly busy you are now that uh, uh, you, you're getting even more media attention than you have in the past, and, and we, re- we appreciate you being willing to come on down and join us here in person. Oh, yeah, I don't know. The whole six-minute drive here really is a, <laughs> you're asking a lot. But anyway, I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Thank right, you, sir. Thank you. Don't forget your coffee. All okay. right. We're going to come right back, and... Oh, well, 
Oh, we're going to go. We'll go. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, let's just go right to Ryan. Let's Can go. Let's do it. All right. Uh, <laughs> Congressman Ryan Zinke joining us on the phone right now. Congressman, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Outstanding. All right. So here, here we are on the cusp, if you will. Uh, next Tuesday, just a couple days away, is the big day. So uh, I know you wanted to, to come on the air and talk with our listeners. So please go ahead. Well, I, I think we can all appreciate uh, when the selection is over and, and our mailbox uh, goes down and we can watch a ball game or a World <laughs> Series without the distractions. I hear that. Yeah, but, you know, it's, an, it's an important election. And I, I, think, I think the most important is everyone needs to, needs to vote. You know, I, I think our country is at risk. I think Montana is at risk. And everyone just has to do their duty and uh, go out and vote. It's, it's getting pretty close. So vote in person if you can uh, to fill out your ballot. If you haven't haven't uh, filled anything out, go down and, and uh, get it done at the, at the uh, facility and, and make your voice heard. Well, now let me ask you this: in in, in your travels across uh, the, the district, obviously you're running a, uh, uh, a race against Monica Trinnell. Uh, what 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 are you what are you hearing from people when when you sit down and visit with them? You know, over a cup of coffee or at a cafe or whatever. What what kind of issues are they are they asking about? You know, the economy is probably the number one uh, because people are hurting. You know, the inflation is too high, gas prices are too high. And insurance, uh, housing, uh, things are a little bit of a struggle uh, in Montana. There's a real concern, as there should be, about immigration at our border. You know, I was in, in Gallatin with the sheriff there. You know, I asked him the question because the President Trump has said he will deport. Look, can I take him at his word? And talk to the sheriff. Uh, if you're given the authority, uh, in, in one thing about Montana, Montana is really good about rounding up. We have a long history of rounding up things. And I asked him up front, if you're given the authority, can you round up and do you know the bad people out there? And absolutely he does. And the sheriffs across Montana do. So give them the authority to round up, but you know, a lot of it is where we're going to put them. And this is where the federal link is important because uh, that agency is ICE. And can the sheriffs round up and, and you know, quote, put them on ICE and, and have ICE deport them? And the answer is yes. And I, I believe President Trump will. But you know, I, I strongly also know that, look, they're going to go after the really bad people. The sheriff knows who's dealing drugs, who's fentanyl, sex trafficking, child trafficking. They know. But to date, under this administration, if they, if they pick them up, there's nowhere to put them, and they're right back on the streets. So I firmly believe that, that President Trump will uh, remove the worst of, of our, our problems. And, and Montana has to be in the front of the line. Because if you start deporting you know, down south, what will happen is they'll run north. And so at the end of the day, you got to be first in the line and... and and do our job, round up, and and make sure that that Montana's safe. So, as as you are, as you're you're driving around the state to, with with your staff, uh, meeting with people, uh, what, 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 let me ask: Is what's the mood that that you're seeing from people, Congressman? Uh, a little bit of fatigue, you know, on on just the Senate race. Uh, Three hundred and nine million dollars had been spent. And so literally, you know, people have knocked on your door five times. You're getting six texts. You have your, your mailbox is full. I wasn't surprised at all when, when uh, the, the tester barbershop commercial, uh, you know, came back. But I think there's a fatigue because the – and the tone. The tone is very angry. Uh, so, you know, it's when you open your mailbox – Oh, this guy's bad. This guy's worse. This guy's bad. You know, it, it continues the tone of anger. And I, I think uh, when we get to this election, like in, in my experience, anger is a distraction from getting things done. And there's a lot of things that we have to do. Uh, but when you're angry, uh, that does not result in an action that, that you can see and, and that we need. Um, I'm, I'm hoping you know, the tone of the, uh, this last 
election. Uh, hoping we can go on the other side of it, sit down and solve our problems. And we have a lot of issues in Montana. You know, when I when I travel around, uh, you know, I've come to the conclusion that looking at our, our federal and state highways, you know, the federal government takes care of theirs, and one would say not as good as they should. The state looks at their roads and bridges, and maybe they, we can do a little better job on that. But virtually no one is paying attention to the counties. You know, they go around the Knoxon Bridge, you know, twenty million dollars, uh, and it's the only only bridge in the Knoxon built in nineteen twenty two. But you got rural fire departments out there that the federal government will put a new regulation on. In many cases, the, their ambulance is no longer in compliance. <laughs> and, and, and look, look if, if, if a local ambulance is in the compliance, uh, and one gentleman, I think out of uh, Garrison, said, I can take my truck and I'd be fine. But if I get an ambulance, it's not in compliance and I can't. I look at it and go, you know, that doesn't sound very good in the winter. Uh, so, you know, some of the federal regulation needs to be needs to be trimmed so, you know, the local municipalities can get the job done. And then we have to focus on, on the infrastructure side of it. And, you know, an advantage or a, a, I think an example of that is Sealy. You know, Sealy Lake does not have a car wash because they, they don't have a, a sewer, they have septic. And and I, I think we do, do got to spend some time on catching up on our rural infrastructure. And if you if you can't have a car wash, then it's likely you can't have a sixplex or an eightplex, and that that you know, goes against uh, what we want to do on, on affordable housing, right? If you can't plug in, and and these septic tanks, Peter, are are a lot, are expensive. You know, sometimes it could be seventy thousand dollars for a septic. And uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could build some affordable housing and, and plug in? So I think Montana's infrastructure, especially in the rural side, needs to be looked at and supported. Tell you what, we're going to take a one-minute timeout. Then we're going to come back and wrap up with with Ryan Zinke. Uh, basically here to encourage folks to get out and vote uh, because Tuesday is Election Day, ladies and gentlemen. I know uh, most of us can't wait uh, for it to be over, but we also can't wait for it uh, to come so that we can... We can exercise our constitutional privilege and vote. We're going to come right back after this one-minute timeout. Stay with us. On Talk Back, we have about four minutes, Ryan. Uh, Ryan Zinke, of course, Congressman Ryan Zinke joining us here. And basically the point of, the point of, your, of your appearance on our show today is uh, not necessarily to promote Ryan Zinke, to promote, but, but to promote being an, a good American and a good citizen. So if you would continue on that vein. Well, you know, part of being an American and a Montanan is we have an opportunity to vote. And we have an opportunity to use our judgment and participate. And I can tell you that one of the reasons why we are where we are, meaning that we have things in our, in our school libraries that shouldn't be there. We have, you know, a lot of problems on, on uh, social and, and immigration and economy is we didn't pay attention. So what I'm asking all Montanans to do is let's pay attention. So let's do our duty. And if we do our duty, then I think things will be fine. But paying attention is go down and, and exercise your God-given right to vote. Uh, and to vote, uh, I, would, I would make sure you get online, look at the broad spectrum of, of things. If you, if you think we're in a better spot than what we were, were four years ago, I suggest you look a little deeper uh, and, and, and then look at a, a better future for this for this country and a better future for Montana. Cause, cause Montana are really good people. We're fiscally responsible. I think we're socially conservative. But Montanans also have a libertarian streak, meaning that don't tell me what to do, especially from Washington, D.C., and, and especially when Washington, D.C. is off the mark. So I, I encourage everyone to, to go out and, you know, the idea, well, my vote doesn't count. I, I, you know, don't fall into that trap. Your vote matters. And, and people say, well, you know, the election's already over. It's, it's, my vote's not going to count. They're, they, you know, it's, it's manipulated. Nope. And I'll, I'll tell, kind of quote the President Trump, and they're too big to rig. So I'm asking everyone to do their duty. 
And if we do their duty, I think the outcome's going to be going to be great. And I, I will tell you that sometimes uh, Nick knows I, I get really frustrated about voter turnout, especially with the, with the, their local primaries, things like that, where the that percentage runs around you know thirty, th- maybe thirty five percent of people that get out and vote in the primaries. And then when we get to the general election, it gets better. But it's still frustrating that I, I would just once love to have. Hey, we had ninety eight percent turnout. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be nice? You know, and, and, you know, a lot of people get a lot of calls. And what I ask, too, is that, you know, call your friends, call your neighbors and ask, hey, have you voted? And they say, oh, yeah, I voted. No, have you really voted? So do the second part. Have you really voted? <laughs> well, no, it's on my coffee table. You know, let's have a cup of coffee. Uh, let's go out and drop your vote off in, in, in person. So I, I encourage that. But, yeah, make make a few phone, phone calls. Our country's worth it. Montana's worth it. Uh, but as, I'm confident that as long as everyone do, does their duty, uh, we'll be fine. And of course, we have you know a lot of a lot of amendments and 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 those. Uh, my advice uh, is: if you don't know, vote no. And if you take the time to know, you would vote no anyway. Right. <laughs> because, because, we are we are out of time. Yeah. I just want to say thank you for. I know you're busy, and we appreciate you being uh, here to encourage folks to vote. Thanks, thanks for being with us today. Indeed, and God bless. And the same. And go out and vote, Montana. <laughs> say, thank you, duty. sir. All right. So, Mr. Nick, what's coming up on tomorrow's fabulous program, sir? Uh, we'll only be on from nine to ten, and we'll have Mirdad Kia back. Uh, he's going to talk about what's going on in Iran and Israel, and obviously there's a big situation over the weekend and friday was the earliest we could get him on to talk about that so he's going to share his thoughts on what's going on all right so that's so good definitely looking forward to that and uh, we will look forward to your calls as well get out there and make it a great day everybody happy halloween be safe out there